I think, as I see it, what Christian faith is fundamentally uh, concerned about is the purposes of human existence. What am I as a human being here for? What am I making out of myself and out of the world as I participate in these activities? That, I think, is one of the guiding questions of the Christian theology, and it poses this question in relationship to the divine, to God. Many people understand that a good life, simply a life that is marked by uh, kind of opulence. I think we have something else, uh, else in mind when we speak about good life. There's a long tradition of thinking about it. It's the life that's worthy to be called good. What kind of life is that? That kind of life has uh, uh, three components, which is life going well, life being led well, and life uh, feeling good. They're summed up uh, very nicely in Apostle Paul's epistle to the Romans, where he defines what the kingdom of God is and what the kingdom of God isn't. Kingdom of God, he says, isn't food and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness is living rightly. Peace is life going well. And joy is life feeling as life ought to feel. I sometimes say the difference between, say, fun and, or, or happiness in a certain sense and joy is like a difference between a bubbly water and a really fine champagne, <laughs> right? Bubbles are there, right? But uh, the de depth of taste and, uh, and aroma are, are, not, uh, are not present. Joy, by its very characteristic, uh, needs an intentional object, which is to say joy is tied to what other aspects of the good life. Uh, I can't just rejoice, whether I can just have fun and forget about everything. I, when I rejoice, I rejoice over something. Christian account of joy is such that one can have joy even in the midst of the false life, almost like a joy which says, my entire world is not defined by the circumstances in which I find myself. I transcend those circumstances in relationship to God and therefore enable also to be an agent that will transform and change those circumstances if the opportunity arises. I have to ask myself, how do I live today? Uh, I can do this by looking at, uh, at the sacred text, at the Bible, and I have to do it by looking at who, what is the world in which I'm going to live. And part of the reason uh, why one needs theology, why one studies theology, is to be kind of self-aware as to how one reads those texts. Texts speak to me. Texts call my existence into question. I don't simply inquire about them. They inquire about me. To the extent that I talk about God in a way that somehow is self-involving and world-involving, in describing God, I am describing also a way of life for myself, for communities, for the world as a whole. The Yale Divinity School has been, uh, for me, an amazing place to, to teach uh, great, great colleagues, great conversation partners, and kind of broad spectrum of, uh, kind of interests of the institution a as a whole. It's a tremendous place to explore some of these uh, fundamental uh, questions, and obviously being at an institution that uh, has a uh, high reputation worldwide is significant for that, for that endeavor. I wish I had more time to you know, uh, take advantage of this incredible richness that's there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm.